Good evening, and thank you for joining me tonight for our first installment in our financial preparedness series in life insurance as a retirement plan. I'm so happy that you decided to join us. And I'm confident that this talk will be beneficial to you. Most people um, have misconceptions about retirement and are not well prepared for their financial future. And tonight we're gonna to talk about how to better prepare for your financial future and take advantage of some unique products that offer many benefits that have helped many people. So as we get started, I want you to uh, prepare yourself mentally. I want you to be attentive and have an open mind. And let's go ahead and get started. I work for the Independent Agency Alliance. My name is Dr. Mark Barisi. I'm actually a healthcare professional by training, and my background is in clinical psychology. I actually counseled people over the years who had had financial problems, and I saw the tremendous emotional toll that being ill-prepared for your financial future can have. And um, it's my hope that tonight I can impart some valuable information to you that will change your life. I'm licensed in Illinois as well as Wisconsin, and I have a company called the Storehouse Agency, which is affiliated with IAA. Um, as an insurance broker, we do more than just life insurance. We also deal with things like retirement planning, college funding, annuities, executive financing, pensions, and even rollover 401ks. Tonight though, we're gonna to talk about one particular product that's offered through our brokerage called an uh, indexed universal life insurance policy, which is offered through American National Insurance Corporation. And we're actually partnered with four of the most respected companies in the industry, companies like AIG, who have been around for a very long time and actually have nearly $500 billion in assets. Companies like Oxford Life, who is one of the leading companies in final expense insurance. We also are partnered with companies like American National and the National Life Group. American National in particular is one of our flagship companies and actually we're one of the top producers in the country with American National. And the companies that we're partnered with are extremely strong. American National has been around since 1905 and actually has over $23 billion in assets. If you look at the companies that we're partnered with, you're talking about companies with combined 350 years of experience in the industry, and certainly all of them carry the strongest ratings of AM Best and Standard & Poor's A for their ability to pay on claims. So for today, we're gonna to talk about three important things. We're gonna talk about first, the retirement crisis in America. Secondly, we're going to talk about some of the pitfalls of funding a retirement. And finally, we're going to talk specifically about life insurance as a retirement plan. Traditionally, we could count on three pillars of retirement. And in generations before us, many of our uh, forefathers enjoyed all three pillars of retirement. One of them being a company-funded pension, another one being social security, and yet a third being personal savings, things like annuities, IRAs, 401ks, and even things like CDs and money market accounts. But many of you may have heard that pensions have largely become a thing of the past. More and more companies have done away with pensions as they've shifted the burden of retirement planning to the employee. And in fact, some of you may have also heard that Social Security, um, one of our um, most respected entitlement programs in the country, 
is actually under stress and may not be around 20 to 30 years from now. And that leaves us basically with personal savings for our retirement. And it's widely accepted that there's a, you know, a retirement crisis in our country. 86% of Americans believe that there is a retirement crisis. 67% would be willing to take less in salary if they could guarantee lifetime income. Nowadays, it's so difficult to come by lifetime income because of changes in retirement accounts. And this slide here is, I think, shocking and really a wake-up call to all of us that about 35% of all households in the U.S. do not have any type of retirement account. And for those that did, the amount of money they have saved up is only about $1,100. And the median balance for households heading into retirement, ages 56 to 61, is only about $25,000. And that should truly shock you because that means that largely they're gonna be depending on social security for their retirement. And did you know that the average social security check that Americans enjoy is only between 12 to $16,000 a year. 12 to $16,000 per year. This slide here talks about the fact that of individuals who uh, participate in some form of a defined benefit plan, the vast majority of all Americans do not participate. If you consider that in our country there's about 320 million folks, nearly a third do not have any form of defined benefit plan. And this is what we talked about earlier, the idea that Social Security may well dry up and may not be available when we need it the most in our retirement. So we cannot count on Social Security for retirement. All of us face three important financial risks in our lifetime. One risk is, what if we die much sooner than expected? Yet another risk is what if we become ill? And on the same token, what if we live too long? These are three risks that can devastate our finances if we don't have a plan. So let's talk about what happens if we die too soon. Is your family protected if something unexpected was to happen to you? A recent study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association actually talked about, for the first time in probably a generation, rising mortality rates and falling life expectancy for the group between 25 to 64 years of age. That's really shocking, but we know intuitively that this is the case because children are actually being diagnosed with chronic health issues like diabetes at a younger and younger age. What happens if we live too long? Are you ready to fund a retirement that has now crept up to over 22 years? It used to be in the financial planning industry that financial planners talked about preparing for a 20-year retirement. But nowadays, the uh, life expectancy is getting longer and longer, and consequently, um, we have to prepare for a retirement that could last more than 20 years. Are you prepared for that? Will your money uh, last as long as you do? And finally, what happens if we unexpectedly become ill? Things like stroke, cancer, and heart attacks still claim more lives in America than any other cause of death. And these same conditions can leave you crippled and unable to work. Are you prepared for that? About 30% uh, of all Americans between 35 and 65 will suffer a disability 
that keeps them out of work for 90 days or longer. What would happen to you if you had this type of a disability where you were unable to work for 90 days or longer? So traditionally, there are several different ways that people fund retirement. And what I've done is they've broke these down into methods that provide lifetime income versus those that do not. In this column here, I'm highlighting methods that do not guarantee a lifetime income, but these are certainly some of the most common ways that folks fund a retirement and prepare for the unexpected. In a savings account, the advantage, certainly these uh, accounts earn next to no interest. Many of you probably know that we're living right now in a zero interest rate environment. And so you're not getting any real yield on an account uh, like a savings account or a checking account. Also, you do have to pay taxes on any interest income that you earn on these accounts. Many of you know that as you get the statements each and every year and you have to include them on your taxes. And certainly, like I said, this form of uh, savings may not last a lifetime. It really depends on how much you choose to pull out. But a much more common method that people use to prepare for retirement is funding um, uh, a defined uh, contribution plan like a 401k, or a 403B if you work for a non-for-profit, or even an individual retirement account called an IRA. And again, there are some key advantages. These are very simple to set up. Typically, when you start a new job, your HR department will ask you if you want to participate in the 401K, and they'll then ask you, do you want um, a low-risk plan, or would you prefer, say, a medium or high-risk plan? Very simple to set up. And like I said, you do get a basic choice of investment strategies that certainly can produce more return than simply putting your money into a savings account. However, there are some key disadvantages. Again, depending on the strategy that you choose, you may get very little interest on these products. They can actually lose money. And some of you who have looked at your statements in the last few months know this, that you've lost considerable money. You do have to pay taxes when you retire on the distributions. Many of these plans are what are called qualified plans, meaning they qualify for a tax-advantaged uh, treatment by the IRS, meaning that you can put money in uh, tax deferred. You don't have to pay. It's pre-tax money that you're using to fund the plan. But when you take the money out, of course you have to pay taxes on it, unless it's a Roth uh, 401k or a Roth IRA. And of course, again, these, the income may not last a lifetime. It totally depends on how much you take out. Now, these plans here are designed to provide lifetime incomes. And, you know, of course, Social Security is the plan that many, many Americans rely on to fund their retirement. And quite honestly, it's pretty well accepted that if all you rely on is Social Security, you'll be living in poverty during your retirement. But the advantages are that it is an entitlement program. As long as you've paid into it, you can enjoy distributions when you retire. It's automatically based on your payroll, and it does provide lifetime income that we believe to be guaranteed, although that is coming under question. Pension plans, which we talked about uh, earlier, the fact that more and more companies are not offering them anymore, again, Typically, if you're fortunate enough to work at an employer that offers one, you can be automatically enrolled. You do get a choice of investment strategies, and it does provide lifetime income. However, you've also probably heard stories in the news about employers who have terribly mismanaged these pension funds. And in some cases, they've been so mismanaged 
that they're not actually able to pay out what they promised to pay out. And in fact, you do have to pay taxes on the distributions during retirement that you get from a pension. And the question becomes, what are tax rates gonna be 20 or 30 years from now? Many of us in the financial industry believe that taxes are gonna be a lot higher than they are now. So the question for the night is why are you working? Why do you suppose most people work? Of course, there's no exact right answer to this question, but some people will say that they work to pay bills or they work to support their family. But the truth is many people are working because they're trying to save for the future and maybe they haven't saved up enough money. They don't have enough savings. Many people in the financial industry would submit that in our country, we don't necessarily have just an earning problem, we have a savings problem. And how many of these faces and pictures have you seen before of people who have to work? Now, if you have three, four, five million dollars in savings, you have the choice not to work, right? However, if you don't have that kind of money in savings, you have no choice but to work. And the question becomes, why are we saving? Well, we're saving because the future is uncertain. Emergencies happen, and also we're saving for our retirement. So let me ask you this question. If you were to retire tomorrow, how much money do you feel as though you need to have every year to enjoy a comfortable retirement? Now, there's no exact right answer, but in my opinion, you'd need about $50,000. Now, we could probably agree that $50,000 would not provide a super comfortable retirement, but at least you'd be able to afford a modest rent or a modest mortgage. You might be able to afford a used car payment, and you'd be able to afford some bills. So the question becomes, how are you gonna get $50,000 20 years from now. Well, if you put $50,000 in a place that pays you zero interest, think of a savings account or a piggy bank, 20 years from now, you'll have $50,000. However, if you put just over $37,000 in a place that's paying you a small amount of interest, like 1.5%, that money will grow in 20 years to about $50,000. Lastly, if you find a place that will pay you 4% interest, you only have to put in $23,000 to get $50,000 20 years from now. But let me ask you a question. How many people do you know that are saving this kind of money with these kinds of interest rates? I personally don't know any. And I would guess that probably less than 10% of all Americans are setting aside this kind of money in retirement every year. So what do you suppose the average American, say the 5% or the 10% is putting into uh, a savings program? Again, it's open to discussion and there's probably no exact right answer. But in my opinion, I would say about $6,000. So again, if you were to put in $6,000 uh, every year in a place that only pays 0%, you're gonna have $6,000 per year in retirement. In a place that pays you 1.5%, you'll have just over 8,000. And in a place that pays 4%, you'll have a little over 13,000. But now I want you to look at this, because this is actually about the average of what people are funding in many of their retirement accounts. And they think they're doing the right thing and they're gonna be okay for retirement. But look at what they stand to have in retirement. Isn't it sad that they're gonna have somewhere between eight to $13,000 a year in retirement? Can you live off of that? 
that's not enough to have a comfortable retirement. And so the question becomes, are we in need of a better solution? And I think the answer is a resounding yes. What if I was to show you a product that for that same $6,000 every year, instead of earning between eight to $13,000, you could earn between 30 to $60,000 a year. Would that be of interest to you? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it, because that's what I want to show you. So, this is a life insurance illustration, and the product that I'm showing you, which is just one product of many products that we offer, this product uh, is showing that a fictitious client named John is contributing $500 a month, which is $6,000 a year. If John funds this for uh, 10 years, obviously he's put in $60,000. If he funds it for 20 years, he's obviously contributed 120,000. Now, on the day that his policy is accepted and John pays his $500 premium, his family, if something happens to him, is gonna get $550,000 tax-free. If nothing happens to him, this is John's money that he can use any way he wants. And by the way, he can take out this money even before age 59 and a half without penalty and without taxes. And look how his money has grown over the 20 years. He put in 120, he already has over 180,000, which is not bad, right? But it gets much better than that. Now, Let's go back to the first two years because I want to illustrate an important point. In the first two years, John has contributed $12,000, right? If something happens to him, of course, his family is going to get $550,000. If nothing happens, though, he only has a little bit over $8,500, which doesn't seem like such a good deal, right? He's put in 12, he only has eight. And look what happens if John chooses to surrender the policy. He gets nothing. That doesn't seem fair, huh? And why is that? Well, it's because this is a life insurance policy. Life insurance policies are front-loaded with fees and surrender charges. And the reason why is, like I said earlier, for $500, if something was to happen to him on day one, his family would get $550,000. So, what we tell people is, after the first 10 years, those fees and charges go away. And you can see here that his money is starting to grow and it's compounding in interest. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. So what I do tell clients, and this is important to consider, is that if you're looking for a short-term uh, uh, retirement product, uh, life insurance is not the way to go. It's not designed for short-term investment. But for long-term investment, this is a very powerful product that has many benefits that can uh, help you. So let's again look at the fact that John paid, played, uh, paid 120,000 over 20 years. He has that $550,000 death benefit if anything happens to him. And in that time, his money has grown to over 180,000. And the question becomes, how is his money growing? Well, his money is growing based on the performance of the S&P 500. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that before. But the S&P 500 is a stock market index that represents 500 of the largest and most respected companies in our country. Think of companies like Walmart and Boeing and McDonald's, companies that are huge and often multinational. Now, what I'm showing you here is the performance of the S&P 500 over the last 20 years. And by the way, 
This represents the worst 20 years in the history of the stock market. So this was not the best days for the U.S. stock market. It only returned 4.02%. Historically, the uh, S&P has returned over 11%. Now, I'm also showing you four different interest crediting strategies, which is how this product grows your money. And one in particular that I'm highlighting here is the point to point with no cap and a spread and a 0% floor. Let me explain that in English to you. What that means is you get the full amount of what the S&P 500 returns minus a 4.75% spread fee. And the reason that you're assessed a spread fee is so they can guarantee that when the stock market turns negative, you do not lose money. I want to repeat that because that's really key. When the stock market turns negative, you do not lose money with this retirement product. Now, I want you to look at some years because the stock market is a barometer of what's happening in the world around us. As we've suffered through the coronavirus, the stock market has been on a roller coaster, up and down. The years 2001 through 2003, of course, that was 9-11 and the dot-com crash. And those years show that the stock market returned anywhere between negative 13, negative 23, and then bounced back to 26%. And again, in 2008, that was the Great Recession. And look at the losses in the stock market. But all along, you would have lost nothing if you had your money in this retirement product. And many people lost much more than negative 38%. Some people lost 50%, 60%, as much as 80%. If you look at the performance of all four interest crediting strategies, they're all outperforming how the S&P 500 did, in some cases by more than double. Now, let's go back to this illustration. The question becomes, is this guaranteed? Are you guaranteed to get this return? And of course, it says right up at the top, it's not guaranteed. So we do have to show you this column because this is what's actually guaranteed. And what's guaranteed means that if every year for the next 20 years the stock market lost money, you would actually only earn a little over $55,000. And the question becomes, why, are, why am I not emphasizing that? The reason why is it's not incredibly likely. The stock market going down two years in a row is referred to as a recession. If it goes down four to five years in a row, that's a depression. When was our last depression? It was in the 1920s during the Great Depression. As a matter of fact, even then, it bounced back within five years. In fact, there's never been in the history of our stock market more than five years in a row where the stock market has been down. So this is actually not very likely. Certainly if the sun melts the earth, it could happen, but this is actually a much more realistic illustration. So what I'm showing you here is the fact that John chooses to stop paying his premiums after 20 years. And look at how his money is continuing to grow based on the interest crediting strategy. By the time he's paid out over 10 years with his distributions, he starts taking a tax-free distribution and he, he takes a tax-free distribution starting at 67 and actually within the first eight years of doing that, he's already collected more than what he paid into the entire policy by double. And each year he's taking out over $30,000 tax free. 
if something happens to John, he still, at this point, his family would still qualify for over 363000 If nothing happens to him, he still has over $331,000 of cash. And of course, if John had never taken anything out of the, prop, the policy, he would have had over $645,000 saved up. Now, I'm going to show you this all the way out to age 121 because that's how far out the mortality tables go. And I want you to look at something. If John lived to be 121, which I know you're saying is not likely, the fact is he would have collected over $1.6 million, having still a death benefit of $230,000. He still has cash, 117000 and look at how much he would have had if he didn't take anything out. He would have had $11.2 million. But it gets better because these products all come with standard living benefits that pay out for 16 different critical illnesses. They also pay out for disability and they also pay out for terminal illness. And these are the 16 different critical illnesses that they pay out on. Common things like stroke, heart attack, cancer, kidney failure. And this is just an example of what you would qualify for based on the severity of impairment as well as your age. But a lot of people say, you know, you're just saying this to sell the policy. They don't actually pay out. Well, they do. This is an actual client who was sold a policy through our office, a 34-year-old female, single mother of two young children. When she got the policy, she was in good health, but less than two years after that, she started to have complications and informed her agent that she had been diagnosed with cancer. She remembered that she had this policy and she had these living benefits. She asked her agent if she could submit a claim, which she did. And less than two weeks later, this check in a lump sum tax free was sent to her by the insurance company. And what's amazing is that she had only paid out less than $12,000 total. So I want to compare the two plans side by side, two common retirement plans, the most common one being the 401k and the IRA, compared to the life insurance plan that I showed you tonight. I want you to look at this. If you compare them side by side, the life insurance plan provides the same tax deferred growth it also offers growth based on the performance of the S&P 500. You have no risk of loss of your money because of that 0% floor. It offers much greater distributions during your retirement, 30 to $60,000 per year tax-free. But you also get this debt benefit upon approval and submitting your first premium something you absolutely don't get with a 401k or an IRA. And you also have these living benefits if you become disabled, critically ill, or terminally ill. Most importantly, these proceeds are not subject to taxes, probate, or creditors. No creditor can attach to this policy. So again, I say to you that it's important to plan for your financial future. And I hope that the information I've shared with you this evening has been beneficial. I would certainly be delighted to answer any questions that you have. I have my contact information here. You can visit my website, which is bestinsurance-rates.com. Um, I do have a contact form on the page where you can submit your information. You can also call me or text me at area code 773-707-6726. And I would very much 
uh, like to talk with you and uh, see if there's any way I can help you. Make sure if you haven't already done so to register on Facebook because if you did not register for this event, you're not eligible for the giveaway. So make sure before uh, the night ends to register. And it's been my pleasure talking with you this evening and I invite you to tune in to a future financial preparedness seminar. Thank you.